This past fall, about 100 members of Mount Tabor United Methodist Church participated in a book study connected to a sermon series addressing issues of racial justice and reconciliation. We used Latasha Morrison's book, Be the Bridge, Pursuing God's Heart for Racial Reconciliation. Through this series, we learned about, acknowledged, and lamented the truth of serious racial injustices, both past and present. Our hearts were called and inspired based on Christian teaching to repent and to become a force for racial justice and reconciliation in our community. The study was enlightening and convicting and left many of us yearning to do more to build on what we learned. Toward that end, and in celebration of Black History Month, we are offering Building Bridges, a video series in which participants from the fall study will share things that they learned or something that they have been inspired to do as a result of the study. Videos are posted each Wednesday. Whether you participated in the fall study or not, whether you are simply curious to learn more, or whether you are ready to jump into the work of racial justice and reconciliation, we hope you will find these videos helpful. So today I have invited Craig Miller and Bobby Sharp, a couple of members of our church who participated to share some of the things that they learned, some of their thoughts coming out of that study. So I'm gonna start um, by asking them to just introduce themselves. Craig, do you wanna start? I'm Craig Miller, a longtime member of Mount Tabor, um, one of the primary teachers in the Koinonia class, and uh, a longtime member of the Outreach Committee. Thank you. Bobby? Well, I'm Bobby Sharp, and I'm a fairly recent member of Mount Tabor United Methodist after moving to Winston-Salem from Boone, where we lived about 30 years. Part of the Quantania class where Craig is, is our teacher and also participate in the uh, Band of Brothers, which meets on Thursday mornings, which also did the uh, study, Be the Bridge. Thank you. So my first question for you or set of questions is, can you just share one important takeaway or or one or two important takeaways from Be The Bridge, something that stuck with you, perhaps changed the way you think or feel about racial issues in the US. And we'll just start with Craig with each of these. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think it's important to understand that, that uh, I think both Bobby and I had been doing a lot of reading before the Be, Be The Bridge study came along. And what impressed me very much about Be The Bridge was that it was the missing piece or a missing piece of um, the picture for me. Um, I had read a lot of books, uh, Ibram Kendi and so on uh, about sort of um, reframing the whole issue of racial justice and getting a new vocabulary that uh, was more precise and so on and so forth. But I hadn't really experienced a, um, a process for um, racial reconciliation, a process that was directed toward achieving uh, racial reconciliation. And I think the process that Tasha Morrison has put together uh, is just marvelous. Um, it is uh, very practical, uh, very biblically based, um, embraces a lot of uh, Christian disciplines, um, disciplines that I suspect we would uh, <clears throat> rather ignore than exercise. Um, and it emphasizes um, uh, long-term, ongoing uh, conversation in a safe environment where people get to know each other well and um, um, uh, feel encouraged to share their feelings and their experiences with one another. Um, and I think that, uh, that that really is the key to getting us to racial reconciliation. That's great, Greg, thanks. Bobby, how about you? Well, like Craig has said, we 
both have read a fair bit before we came here into this day. Um, I'd read, I'd read uh, recently, actually, Robin D'Angelo's White Fragility, which helped put into context why some of us have such a hard time facing some of these realities. Uh, I spent about seven decades following the civil rights movement, uh, having grown up in rural Alabama. So this is uh, very close to me as a part of my own personal history. Despite all of the things that I had read and I've gone to the Civil Rights Museum in Memphis and attended other uh, events, watched videos, there were still loose ends. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have it tightly packaged together well. And, De and D'Angelo helped with that, Kendi helped with that, and others helped with that. But it really was Morrison's Be the Bridge that brought loose ends together. Uh, Craig alluded to coming into focus. It was the picture coming into focus. It's that kind of, um, of gift, I suppose I should say, from Morrison to me in my own journey of uh, trying to understand uh, the racial issues that have been all around me all of my life. Mm -hmm. So I found this uh, being a way to tie it together well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear what both of you said. It, it really, I think, hits the nail on the head of the very unique and powerful role this book and this study and this discussion plays. So, well, um, after reading the book, hearing the sermons, being part of the discussion, did it, were you inspired to take any new action, small or large? You both have been reading and thinking about this for years. Um, did, can you give our listeners a sense of anything concrete that it inspired you to do differently? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the, the inevitable self-reflection that goes along with the study um, uh, generates a long list of, well, I should do this better, I should do that better, and so on. Um, I think a couple of things that uh, are, are more salient for me is that um, I right away joined the Church for All People Committee. <laughs> um, and, um, and then I, I have been, uh, uh, well, Judy and I together have been more conscious of um, uh, where the black businesses are and trying to uh, trying to patronize those businesses. Um, you know, we, we have a choice where we uh, where we go to buy our groceries and otherwise spend our money. And uh, it's uh, it's really important to uh, to support um, those mi minority owned businesses. So. OK, that that's a great idea. Yeah. Great actions. Bobby. But part of the takeaways, number of the takeaways, but one of particular takeaway from Marcy's book is I felt a moral clarity that has offered me a new level of courage mm. to simply engage with people with out of the out of that space of courage, with with the courage that the moral clarity from Be the Bridge has uh, helped give. Mm -hmm. And that happens in ordinary conversations all the time. Mm -hmm. By far, the most conversations I have are with fellow white people, men and women, but particularly men. So I have a, I have a, I, I approach those conversations from an entirely new mm -hmm. point of moral clarity to be the voice, be a voice, be a bridge in those conversations that is very subtle. It can be very um, uh, indirect, but it's very it's very clear to me that um, that that's an opportunity to be a bridge right during the moment of a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, are there any other things you would like to share before we wrap this up? If someone uh, who did not participate in the study, you know. If you're imagining talking to someone who didn't participate in the study, is there something else you'd like to share with them before we wrap up? Well, as Bobby alluded, I think 
uh, the general anticipation on the part of persons thinking about uh, racial reconciliation study is that it's a scary thing. Mm. Uh, these are topics that um, we don't discuss easily. Um, they're topics that uh, many of us actively avoid discussing. <laughs> um, and uh, my, my um, words of assurance, I think, would be that this is about as um, non-confrontational a, a way to get at the, uh, the substance of ra racial reconciliation as you're gonna find anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it, it was just remarkably easy to get honest and um, courageous um, discussion going. I think I would offer this for any of us coming out of the Judeo-Christian tradition, our faith is part of what we're um, what we're thinking. It's who we are as we approach this whole issue of racial justice, of racism, systemic racism, white sovereignty, white supremacy. And I've really found it very helpful for Morrison to include all the scriptural references mm -hmm. that she did. It tied it and grounded it directly in our Christianity, in our Judeo-Christian faith, which gives it a gives it a power that I found especially potent. Yeah, I agree. Thank you both for what you shared. Um, I I think it will really help listeners both understand the value of the study and the impact it had, and also help those of us who are struggling to figure out what to do in response, get some ideas. So thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time to listen in today. We hope you found a bit of inspiration to continue learning and perhaps to partner with us at Mount Tabor as we seek to truly love our neighbors as ourselves and to be a force for equality, justice, and peace in our churches, our community, our nation, and our world. We welcome all who feel called to learn, grow, and make a difference to join with us. Please email us at the email on your screen, gray.handwork at mounttaborumc.org with your ideas or to express interest in getting involved.